Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to Raleigh Little Theater's Amphitheater for this holy feast day of Pentecost. On Pentecost, we celebrate the outpouring of God's Spirit on all flesh. And this morning, we have the great privilege of witnessing God's Spirit speak through not only the leadership of this church, but also and especially through our seniors and through the babbling of infants who will be baptized here in this place today. We invite you to find your comfortable seat. Of course, as Greg said earlier, you were lucky if you got here early to get a shady seat up at the top. Uh, if at any point you need to go get refreshments, please feel more than welcome to go to the back tables to receive refreshments. And friends, uh, truly, if you see anyone who looks disoriented, uh, please just invite them to come and sit with you. As Greg said earlier, this is a moment uh, for all of Raleigh to hear God's Spirit speaking through God's church. This morning, I am standing next to a very special person. This is Haley Job. Haley is our Duke Divinity School intern for the summer. She just completed her first year at Duke. Haley is a graduate of Davidson Woo! College. Yep, give him the cheers. There's a bunch of great Davidson folks in this church. Haley is from Richmond, Virginia, and uh, Haley has a passion for mentoring young women. So if she's not about her academic pursuits, she is coaching middle school volleyball. What a saint, coaching middle school volleyball. So we are really blessed that this summer, Haley is going to be assisting not only on Sunday mornings in the liturgy, but also Haley is going to help us dream and imagine and build out our Christian education. And Haley, as you begin your time with us today, I would love for us to pray over you. And friends, I invite you to extend your hands forward as we offer a prayer over Haley and her ministry. Good and gracious God, on this Pentecost day, we celebrate how you have flooded earth with the gifts of heaven. We thank you for the giftedness of your servant, Haley. We thank you for your call on her life out of her baptismal waters. And we look forward to all the ways, O oh Lord, she will teach us the wonder and splendor of your love. Might this church be a place that echoes the calling she is hearing. Might this church be a place that fans the flames of Pentecost in her heart. Might this church be a place that leads her in the way of Jesus. All this we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I went down to the river to pray, 
Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way. Sinners! Oh, sinners, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, sinners, let's go down Down in the river to pray As I went down Good morning. Good morning. Please stay standing as we do the collect. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. All right. Prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Please be seated. What's up? Good morning. Alrighty, today I'm going to read for y'all the New Testament lesson. Uh, it's from the book of Acts, verse 2, uh, or sorry, yes, Acts, verses 2 through 21. Let us begin. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, their, in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of the Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene. The visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judea Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what languages? Sorry. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit spoken through, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit in those days. Sorry. 
<laughs> I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood. Before the great... Before the great spectacular day of the Lord comes, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson today is Romans 14 through 17. All who are led by God's spirits are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ, if we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to St. John. If you're able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I'll ask the Father, and he'll send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither recognizes, sees him, or recognizes him. But you know him because he lives with you and will be with you. Now, I've spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. May I speak and may we hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. An ancient tradition within the Methodist Church is that your bulletin becomes a fan. So uh, we have equipped you with the latest technology. This is a 2022 edition fan and bulletin. You feel free to deploy them as our ancestors did and teach your children the ways that lead to holiness. Uh, any cradle Methodists here? I just wonder. Got a few. We got a few. Yeah, all right, good. People who were raised in the Methodist Church, cut your teeth here. This is kind of, uh, you know, this has always been your church home. Here's what I want to say to y'all. Welcome home. I mean, Methodists are most at home worshiping outside. We always have been. I know over the last 250 years or so, we've gotten some nice real estate. We've built some big buildings, but God help us, we'll always have a soft spot for this. Because we were born outside. And we were a movement that started preaching in fields outside of coal mines. And since that was where we were born, it's where our heart has always been. We'd rather be under trees than under stained glass sometimes. So welcome, Methodists. If you're new, if you're not a cradle Methodist, if you're a cradle Episcopalian, say, shock, God can show up outside. Welcome. Welcome. 
We're glad you're here. Just to make our Methodists feel even more comfortable, we have chosen the most Methodist of scripture readings today for Pentecost. We've appointed these, uh, these scriptures which highlight and kind of celebrate the Methodist insistence on inclusion. Did you hear it? There's the story of Acts where people from all over the world are getting together and everybody's included and the Methodists smile. And then there's the Romans where Paul says to the church in Rome, now listen, we're all God's children. Methodists love the word all. We always highlight in the Bible. We circle it. We highlight it. That's our favorite word. And so we hear Paul say that. Paul says a lot of stuff that makes us scratch our head, but he says that and we finally smile. And then even in John's gospel, John 14, Jesus is talking and he's saying, listen, okay, uh, I and the Father are one. And so God has made us, humanity, a part of God's very self. It just kind of warms your heart, doesn't it? These scriptures, they're so inclusive, they're so broad. I mean, somebody play Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, and show me the way to the cookies. This is Methodist Zen. This is our briar patch outside with broad and inclusive scriptures. But before we, before we actually get to the picnic, we are going to get to the picnic. Before we get to the picnic where we celebrate God's inclusion of all of humanity, we would do well to remember this, that before Pentecost's inclusion, there was an exclusion in Jesus. Here's what I mean by that. We picked up our gospel reading in chapter 8. I mean, sorry, in verse 8. Chapter 14, verse 8. That's where we picked up our scripture reading this morning for the gospel. I don't know if you know how the Bible works, but before verse 8, there's verse 6. John 14, 6 says this. Jesus looks us in the eye and he says, Now, listen, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's the most exclusive thing he says. We almost never read it in the Methodist church. It barely shows up in our lectionary because we don't like that exclusive part of Jesus. It makes us wince. Plus, we've been, you know, burned by that Jesus before. Who says stuff like that, and suddenly you got to be believing a certain thing or acting a certain way for God's love to be yours, and we just don't like that. So we cut out verse 6. We move straight to verse 8. But here's what I want us to know this Pentecost, friends, is that before we can celebrate the inclusion we see today at Pentecost, we have to understand the exclusion that Jesus is saying in John 14. No John 14 exclusion. There is no Acts 2 inclusion. In John's gospel, there's really one question at hand for the whole thing. And this is the question. Like, who are God's people? Is it the Pharisees? Is it the Sadducees? Is it the religious authorities? Is it maybe Pontius Pilate? I mean, he seems to have all the power. Is it like the band of fishermen? Is it the women? Like, who are God's people? That's the question that kind of hangs thick over all of John's gospel. It's the same question that hangs thick today. As people are wondering, like, what church do I want to be a part of, if any at all? What do I believe? Who are my people now? What do I actually want to be a part of? Like, who's right? It's that same question all the way through John's gospel. And with that question kind of lying like tinder at the base of the story, Jesus throws a spark in John 14. The whole gospel ignites in this chapter when he says, listen, now, You're all wondering who's right. Who are God's? Listen. I'm the way. What you see in me is the only way to God. There is no way to be in God's way that is not the way of Jesus. That is caring for the sick. That is loving the outcast. That is forgiving sinners, that is reconciling enemies, that is offering peace instead of hate, embodying love. That is the only way. There is no other way to be included in God's way. Do you see that exclusivity? Now, here's the scandal of Pentecost. Anybody can be a part of that way. Anybody can be a part of the way that Jesus is embodying for us. It is open to anyone and everyone. Residents of Mesopotamia and Crete and Arabia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, 
Liam, you nailed it. Where are you? Dude, you killed it. It's the hardest reading of the whole Christian year. You killed it. Anybody, anybody, give him a hand. Give him a hand. It's like he was speaking in tongues up here. I don't, it's like kind of, anybody from any walk of life can be a part of the way of Jesus. It's open to anyone, but you've got to be about the ways of Jesus in order to be on the way that leads to life. Do you see the exclusivity that leads to inclusivity? Do you see the inclusivity that comes from the exclusivity of saying, this is the way that leads to life? If we're not caring and loving and forgiving and reconciling like Jesus... Friends, we're not on the way. And anybody, Methodists, Baptists, in the church, outside of the church, any orientation, any political affiliation is invited to be a part of the way of Jesus. That's why the church is outside celebrating today. We're looking for anybody with an earshot of my voice who wants to embody love in this world to be a part of this movement. That's why the first Methodists went outside to the coal mines looking for anybody. If it took coal miners to embody God's love, they would go and preach and find them and invite them to be a part of the way. That's why the earliest church left the upper room and ran out into the streets of Jerusalem. Anybody who wants to be a part of this is invited to embody the love of God. That's why we're outside today. Anyone who wants to embody the love of Jesus is invited to join this journey of making heaven take place on earth. And when it happens, y'all, it converts you. It changes you. No matter where you are or who's saying it or what language they're speaking, you understand it, you know it in your bones, and it will save you. It happened to me. I was in Jerusalem. Molly and I, I know that sounds like a humble brag. Uh, We were in Jerusalem because that's what pastors do. It really wasn't. Somebody graciously invited us to go. We were with a church that I was serving at that point in time, and they take a trip we're taking a trip to Jerusalem, and we, uh, we went there for two weeks. This was right after 9-11. And tensions between particularly Western Christians and Muslims were tense. Ours was the first bus led into Bethlehem, which is in Palestine. We were met with armed guards who went through our bags and made sure that we understood where we were. The mantra of the trip was, be careful. One afternoon, we had a free afternoon in the old city, and so Molly and I, my wife and I, decided that we'd go get lost in the old city, and so we did, and we meandered through the old streets, which are like a labyrinth, and they're just shops and colors and smells, and it's like glorious, and we kept wandering, and we went, and eventually we found out we were in the Muslim quarter. We stood out, to say the least. I held Molly's hand and squeezed, tried to remain confident because I knew where I'm going, right? The further we went where I thought we were going, the deeper we got lost in the Muslim quarter and uh, we couldn't understand anything, no signs, no languages. We walked by a shop and something caught my eye. I don't remember what it was. I do remember what it was. It was a hookah. I saw a hookah in a shop and I wanted to look at it. So I let go of Molly's hand for a second to look at the hookah and I turned back and y'all, she was gone. Like, gone. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of like Zacchaeus. I couldn't see over the crowds and there was no sycamore tree for me to climb. And so I was panicking, walking around the Muslim quarter looking for my wife with the mantra, just be careful, be careful, always be aware that our guides had told us. It felt like a half an hour. It was probably five minutes. Eventually I found her. She was terrifyingly sitting down watching two Muslim men play backgammon. A man named Muhammad had found her, noticed that she looked lost, and invited her over to his orange juice stand where he made fresh orange juice. Muhammad made her a a seat out of a bucket. When he saw me, he grabbed me. He pulled me over to where she was. He made me a seat. He sat us down. He spoke almost no English, but he brought us orange juice. He told us to understand to sit where we were, and so we stayed put. He ran off, I guess, to his friend's stand who had made hummus. He brought us back fresh hummus, and he made us eat fresh hummus and orange juice before helping us find our way back to our hotel. And y'all, in that old city in Jerusalem, it was like a flame lit upon Muhammad's head. As he made sure that we were safe, and oriented, and fed, 
and welcomed. Y'all, the orange juice and hummus tasted like bread and wine. The ways that Jesus embodied among us took flesh in this man named Muhammad. And the scandal of Pentecost kind of became truth. Y'all, here's the truth. Anyone who embodies love and hospitality and grace and joy for strangers and friends alike, they are on the way that leads to life. And there is no way that leads to life that is not that way. And so our seniors... Here's what we want you to know. We are commissioning, commissioning you to live in that way wherever you go. It doesn't matter so much to us that you stay in the right church or that you uh, believe exactly like we believe or that you do exactly like we do. What matters to us is that you follow our friend Jesus in the ways that make the love of God take flesh in the world. What matters to us is that you embody wherever you are this narrow way of love that becomes so broad in you that others can find their way on that path too. I pray that you follow Jesus and my friend Muhammad until you have flames of fire. Until you have a broad path before you. Until the world finds in you a way that leads to life. Come Holy Spirit. May it be. Amen. In these last days, uh, the prophet tells us that God will pour out God's spirit on all flesh and that everyone becomes a preacher. We have two seniors who are going to come offer us a word uh, this morning. Anne Francis and Amala, I'm not sure where y'all are. There you are, <laughs> right in front of me. Y'all come on down. Come on down. And I think because of our mic, you're going to go up on the stage. Yep. These are two from our senior class who are going to give us just a little bit of a testimony about how this wide way has been made uh, particular and inviting for them within the life of our church. Um, we will pray for our seniors at the end of our liturgy. We're going to pray for them as we send them out um, to go on to whatever is next for them. But before we do that, we wanted to give space to listen for God's spirit and God's word among them. Hi, I'm Anne Francis. To me, community is one of the most important things in my life. A group of people who enjoy the company of each other or just exist can impact so many aspects of our lives. Community is filled with joy, relationships, and conversation. As I reflect on my experience as a youth in the church, I immediately think of the different communities I've been a part of and the people who have made a difference in my life and my faith journey. In elementary school, Pathways was such a fun and creative way to introduce new faith practices to the younger generations. I was forever grateful for the safe and fun community that I could be a part of each Sunday. In middle school and high school, youth group was such an exciting and new experience that I learned how to be more connected to my faith and my church community. The opportunities that this program provided for me made me feel like I belonged in this church family. The idea of spending Sunday nights at church with my closest friends singing and having meaningful conversations about faith was something that I had been waiting for as a young girl in Sunday school. As I graduate now, I realize that this church community has shown me unconditional love and given me endless opportunities to grow my faith as a young woman. I hope that in the future, the church's values and lessons will encourage myself and others to find new ways to grow in faith in different communities wherever their future leads them. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amala. Um, I remember going to Edenton Street for the first time when I was about five or six on Easter Sunday. And I remember playing with my cousin's Hot Wheels cars he got in his Easter basket, but that's probably all I could tell you about that day. But now I could share many, many stories about Sundays in the Gathering or from missional community or youth group. Between these communities and other worship opportunities, Eden Street has felt like a second family to me. People from the church showed up while my mom was sick last year and soon lost her battle to cancer. 
people helped with meals and sent nice cards and that I still and I think about these and still appreciate them. Once in-person worship began again, I rode to church with others and we had our normal Sunday brunch together again. Part of this community turned into a small group and we meet every Monday night for dinner and discussion. I never would have imagined the impact this group would have on me and my faith. When I lost my mom, I was very nervous about losing my faith and drifting away from the church. Church was always something I did with my mom and not having her to be my buddy all the time made me question what would happen. But thanks to the community at Eaton Street, I can truly say that my faith has become even stronger within the last year. Thanks be to God. This church has made me feel welcome and is a place I feel like I belong. A lot of the people in my community at church aren't just people I see on Sunday mornings. It's people who I invite to my senior night at school, ask to go get ice cream with, or are some of the first people I share some big news with. Eaton Street Church has had an immense impact on my life, and I'm so thankful for the community here that has turned into a second family to me. Thank you. Yeah. Amala has so beautifully given us the glimpse of what baptism is and what it means to be a covenant community of baptism. And so we thank you for all of the ways in which you, the community, have helped raise up our seniors from their baptismal waters, and you have taught them in the way that leads to life. This morning, we have the great opportunity to live into uh, the great celebration of Pentecost where thousands came to be baptized. That's church numbers for three. So uh, we have this, after, this morning the great opportunity to baptize uh, three young persons into the way of Jesus Christ. And so I invite the families who will be baptized to come forward now. Also, Greg mentioned that we are most at home as a church outside, and I recognize that in your bulletins it says UMH, and most of y'all don't have the United Methodist hymnal with you, right? So we're going to do this outside church style, okay? Uh, it's going to be call and response. So I will let you know, church, how to respond, and when I prompt you with your whole Methodist flaming heart, we do, we will. Does that sound good, church? Yes. Wonderful. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the holy sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's church. We are incorporated into, into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift to us, given without price. This morning, we have the great opportunity to celebrate the baptism of William Zinn's library as well as to celebrate the baptism of David Arthur Clancy and Serena Elizabeth Clancy. <laughs> Baptismal families, I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you reject all that is evil, repent of your sin, and accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say I will. Do you as Christ's church, his body, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. If so, say, we do. we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care and surround them with a community of love and forgiveness? If so, say, we will. We will. Wonderful. It's like we do outside church every week. Let us pray. Eternal Father, your mighty acts of salvation have been made known through water. From the moving of your spirit upon the waters of creation to the deliverance of your people through the flood and through the Red Sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit.
to bless this gift of water and they who will receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised in Christ, they may share in his final victory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. What name shall be given to this child? William Zins. William Zins. William Zins, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you will live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh. What name shall be given to this young woman? Serena Elizabeth. Serena Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. David, we talked about this earlier, man. You're going to get wet. You're going to get soaked. So stand where the church can see you. You're okay. <laughs> David Arthur, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. You heard it in the prayers to wash away. Oh, goodness. Church, I commend to you these persons in your love and care. Might you do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would live in grace and peace all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. Friends, we might now celebrate our new sisters and brothers in Christ. If you didn't hear it, David said, thanks for washing my hair. <laughs> What a joy God is raising up, and we are celebrating new families all over the place here today, this Pentecost Sunday. I know it is hot, but there is grace to be received here at this table. We have already um, collectively had the confession of sin as part of the baptismal liturgy, and so now we celebrate the peace that Christ offers us, the reconciliation, the love, the peace that we have through and only through Jesus Christ and his love. We celebrate the fact that Jesus invites all, say that word all, all to the table. Jesus invites all to the table. So whoever you are and wherever you are, you are welcome, you are wanted, you are invited to this table by Jesus Christ himself. And so now, having been, um, having been forgiven of our sin and raised into this family in Jesus Christ, we celebrate that reconciliation, that love, and that grace. I invite you to stand, exchange pe um, signs of Christ's peace. You can grab some water, come right back for communion. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. Don't go far, y'all. Peace be with you. She did such an amazing job. Wouldn't that be? Just see there you have my mic on, but yeah, it was so good. It was so good. Peace be with you. What a happy day. And also, we made it, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> yes, peace be with you, Ellen. Love you. Okay. All right, y'all, come on back. And please remain standing for the great Thanksgiving as we prepare for this communion feast together. The words of this liturgy are printed in your bulletin. A couple of instructions. We don't have a separate offering today, a separate time for that. 
So in a moment when you come forward to receive communion and all are invited, we invite you to place your offering as an act of worship in these four baskets when you come forward. When it's time to come forward, the ushers will show you how to come um, from both sides. There will be two stations on each side. You simply put your hands out to receive the elements at that time. And I will be serving gluten-free elements if that's something you need. Also, if it's difficult for you or you don't want to walk all the way down, but you do want to receive communion, put your hand up big and strong and we will see you and bring the elements to you. So using the prayers that are printed in the bulletin together, let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our thanks it is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love, O oh God, remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, God gave birth to the church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of God's word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant poured out for you in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of God's children together, let us pray the prayer Jesus is teaching us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. As the servers come forward and the ushers will show you where and how to come forward to these four stations and bring your offering.
table is set. Come and receive Christ and God's grace today. Up 
but it's nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah There's a few people being served still, and as they are, let us pray together the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to instruct the servers just to come on as I speak and put the elements up here. Don't be shy. Just come on up and put them up here as I make a few invitations to you all. First of all, we have a funny celebration. There is a couple here who got married about 16 hours ago, and Reverend McLean did their wedding. Could I have them stand up? Katie Schaefer and Sammy Hobgood. What a way to start a marriage. Where are they? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, just be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as they put these elements forward, I want to invite you into three things, head, heart, and hands, um, as we continue our discipleship, not just on Sunday, but throughout the whole week. First of all, head. Um, next Sunday, June 12th, is an opportunity to come together, about 20 to 25 people, at Everett and Mary Rose Knight's home for another rendition of apps and more. It'll be a happy hour type, informal time together. We would like you to register or RSVP so we can have the right number of folks there and the right amount of refreshments. Reverend Moore will be there. He's been here a year and a half, but some of us are still feeling new and trying to get oriented after the pandemic and coming back. So we're excited uh, that Greg continues to join with us in small groups to connect at these apps and more. So you're invited. Please sign up. It's on the app or in the newsletter. There's a link. That's next Sunday, June 12th at 530. Heart. At the end of the summer, um, well, at the end, at August 1st through 5th, so the first week in August, we have Music and Worship Arts Camp, where children from rising first graders to rising seniors will come together, have a camp at the church. It'll be all about singing, movement, dancing, bells, giving God glory, having a lot of fun together. We need volunteers to run that, and we invite you to bring your kids, neighbor kids, grandkids, sign them up. It's going to be a ton of fun. Hands. Next Sunday during the Sunday school time from 9.45 to 10.15, it's a short time, but we can make a lot of impact in that short time if we come together. People of all ages are invited to come um, once a month in uh, this summer, the second Sunday of each month, we'll be doing Sunday serves. Well, we'll come together during that Sunday school hour, all ages, and put our hands to work that through our hands, our offering, our doing, and our actions, 
we might join God in the beautiful things God is doing to alleviate hunger and suffering in this world. So next Sunday in the Chapel Annex at 945, come with your hands ready to work. I believe we'll be making sandwiches that then will be given to Raleigh Rescue Mission for bagged lunches for our neighbors. If not that, we'll be doing something similar to that. Um, Let's see, head, heart, hands. And lastly, we have an opportunity for you to do something with your hands right here, right now, as you leave. Maggie in the blue dress is at a table. There, she's waving. She's back by the refreshments. She's got a stack of thank you notes, thank you cards. We want just short, one sentence blessings. If you would take the time today to grab a card, write a sweet note, thank you, we appreciate you, we love you, happy summer. We will be blessing the teachers and the staff at Khan Elementary School, which is a school we've partnered with, with for a while. It's a public school here in our parish. We want to respond to all that's happened, the gun violence, the fear um, of this time by blessing our teachers, by saying, we are praying for you. We thank you for your service. Have an awesome summer. So would you today, um, if you're gonna have a picnic, you can jot a note or even on your way out. Our goal is to get 80, because that's how many we need to give every teacher and staff a card. Um, that's all I've got on the invitation. So let's stand for our closing hymn. The words are printed in the bulletin. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the I'm going to invite our seniors to come down, and for Haley Foscue, one of our um, ministers with our youth, to come down as well as we pray over them and uh, send them and celebrate with them uh, as they prepare to move into the next phase of life. Y'all come on down. Yeah. All of you can come down. All right. This is perfect. All right, friends, we are going to pray a blessing over our seniors so... Oh, we're going to wait. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I guess I can. We're going to pray a blessing over our seniors. So once um, we bow our heads to pray, if you would extend your hands to pray over them. Um, and then seniors, after we're finished, you're going to hang out up front for a little bit so people can come say hey and talk to you and congratulate you for all the hard work you've done. Yes. You can join on the other side of them or wherever. All right, friends, let us bow our heads. Good and gracious God, thank you so much for the blessed time that we have spent together this morning. We are grateful to spend time with each other and with you in this beautiful amphitheater and in this wonderful weather. Loving God, we thank you for the way that you've poured out your blessing over these seniors and all of their friends and their peers. You have blessed them with skills and friendship and wisdom over these past years. May you continue to pour out blessings over them as they move into their next season of life. God, I pray that they never forget your love for them. Lord, may our sweet, sweet seniors also never forget to show your love to everyone they meet. God, may we all know your love and show your love. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen. 
Well, friends, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but anybody is invited to be a part of this. And when I say this, what I mean is making the love of God and the ways of Jesus take flesh in the world. I pray that whoever you are and whoever you meet sees those ways take flesh in you. And I pray that the Spirit falls richly upon you as you invite anyone to come and join us on this journey of making God's kingdom take flesh on earth. Might the Spirit lead us in that way. And might we go forth from this place with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.